Hello and welcome to the CNBC TV 18 PWC CEO Dialogues. I'm Shireen Bhan and joining me this evening to take the conversation forward, Sanjeev Krishan, Chairperson at PWC India. Sanjeev, always a pleasure. Many thanks for joining us. Bharat Koshal, MD of Hitachi India Private Limited. Bharat, appreciate you joining us. Shashank Srivastav, the Executive Director at Marathi Suzuki. Mr. Srivastav, many thanks for joining us. Mr. Tyagarajan, MD of Blue Star here with us as well. We've also got Preeti Bajaj, the CEO and MD of Luminous Power Technologies. Preeti, it's good to have you join us here at the CEO Dialogues. Atul Lal, the Vice Chairman and MD of Dixon Technologies, also here with us. Mr. Lal, always a pleasure. Many thanks for joining us. Sanjay Kapoor, the Chairman of Sona Comstar. Sanjay, it's great to have you here back with us on CNBC TV 18. Arun Shukla, the CEO of JK Lakshmi Cement. And Sudipta Ghosh, Industrial Products Leader and Partner at PwC. Gentlemen and Preeti, many, many thanks. We have a whole host of questions lined up for our panel. But before I get started, let me throw it across to Sudipta. Sudipta, you know, my very first question to you as you set out the context for the conversation that we intend to have this evening. Is this India's manufacturing breakout moment? If it is, why is that the case? What's really changed and what are the mega trends to watch out for? Sure, thank you very much, Shireen. And uh, you're right, uh, we are seeing a lot of mega trends and uh, I'll kind of summarize that in four or five key points. Uh, the first one is around the changing customer expectations. Uh, in the industrial products world, traditionally, you have been manufacturing a physical product but now the expectation is that how that product is going to be used. So you are looking at productized services and uh, you're talking about anything as a service and that's where one of the important uh, focus of many of these manufacturing organizations is to differentiate away from just being pure product companies to also service oriented organizations and that's where they can really differentiate, particularly in commoditized products, mm. particularly in, uh, from export perspective because you said because it's, it's going to be the future for, for the country. So if you are going to export and uh, lead this uh, uh, movement from an export-led perspective, we need to be focusing around quality and around, around the services, around the product. The second thing which is coming up, mega trend, is around the supply chain and we have seen uh, uh, an enormous amount of changes around the supply chain, around the, around the uh, uh, disruptions which are there in the supply chain and their organizations are uh, significantly investing in digitization in a very big way mm. because you need to have an end-to-end -end view of the entire supply chain before you can actually say where is, things can change and where things can go wrong and where you need to uh, make that right kind of an intervention. The third thing which I'm going to say is that uh, today is, the, is an era where uh, excellence in manufacturing is going to be the most important thing whether we are catering to the domestic uh, market or whether we are doing an export so when you are talking about quality uh, typically the digital operations the, the way you are manufacturing the way you are uh, controlling the quality the way you are having a complete visibility of the shop floor the way you are addressing safety and also uh, the way you are addressing ESG in your manufacturing process mm -hmm. is going to come in a very very big way in terms of how do you define uh, the quality which is coming out and, and being produced uh, uh, right in front. Mr. Lal I want to come to you now because you know uh, like uh, your peer sitting next to you Mr. Srivastava you've seen the Indian manufacturing story play itself out over the last three plus decades since uh, liberalization. What I want to understand from you is, especially in the last five or six years, we've seen several policy interventions. We've seen a move towards higher import duties. Uh, you know, we've seen a move back towards import substitution uh, across different sectors, from defense to the sector that you're currently uh, operating in. We've just seen the most recent announcement coming in from the government on uh, curbing imports as far as laptops, etc. are concerned. I want to start by understanding from you, uh, what, what, how do you see this playing out? In the long term, it is likely to be advantage for companies like yours, but in the short term, what does it really mean? Thanks, Shireen. Thanks very much. Uh, you see, for electronic manufacturing industry, uh, we are of a firm conviction that this is our inflection point. In our industry parlance, we call it our Y2K okay moment. Uh, please appreciate anywhere around the globe, right from Japanese history of Meiji transformation or Chabals of Korea, you need a state intervention, you need some hand-holding in the stages of infancy of any industry. 
and we firmly believe the government policy framework is absolutely aligned in that direction. So our convictions are basically three or four. One, the electronics products requirement in the country, which were largely serviced till five, seven years back through imports, are going to be serviced through domestic manufacturing. Second, over a period of time, this manufacturing is going to deepen and the value addition is going to significantly increase. Third, also over a period of time, the IP is going to belong to the Indian industry. Fourth, if not all, in many of the specific product categories, India is going to become globally com comparative and we're going to service the global markets. And one can see that trend. Uh, mobile exports, mm. Apple shifting its footprint into India. Now this is just the beginning of the story. We feel what happened to the auto sector is going to be replicated in the electronics manufacturing sector in this country. Uh, specifically responding to the laptop and the IT products uh, uh, being uh, uh, covered now under licensing. So there are various viewpoints to it. Mm. But uh, from the manufacturing industry, we are of a firm view that this again is a positive step. Uh, please appreciate the Indian domestic industry, manufacturing industry, will take just six to eight months to ramp up the production. And in the intervening period, the government is coming up with the requisite policy interventions to ensure that demand is met, either through imports or enhancing local production. Please be rest assured, the industry has adequate bandwidth to manufacture at a cost uh, which is comparable to the global manufacturing companies. It's also ensured through the ITPLI2 mm. that the requisite value addition will keep on enhancing year on year. And I'm very sure that in three, five years, you'll have some Indian solutions coming out of tablets and laptops. So uh, we welcome it. It's a debatable point because there are very various free market pundits who have a contrary viewpoint. We welcome that. But then we are of a firm view that these initiatives are very supportive, extremely important in building up the ecosystem. I was just in China uh, just uh, yesterday. And still, the kind of government support you see, you go to the various provinces, the land building is free. 100 acres, a million square feet mm. constructed, nothing charged. It's still on a mobile export, a provincial state government would offer 5 RMB on any phone above 30 dollars. So economics is not just economics, mm. it is political economics. We're seeing that play out very clearly <laughs> in the world that we live in today. A lot of the economic decision making is linked to political decisions as well. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to get into the debate on how much government intervention is required or needed at this point in time. That will take us uh, enough time uh, and, and we'll run out of time for, for our other panelists. But I just want to pick up on what you said because I think that's where the concern stems from. You said that you believe in the next three to six months uh, domestic production should be able to cater to the demand. Uh, is, that, is that so? Yeah, we are very confident. The first level of manufacturing, which comprises a, of FATP and PCBA assembly, will happen. There is more than adequate capacity, capability, and bandwidth in the industry to execute that. And, and you, at Dixon specifically, are you looking at ways of being able to fill this gap? Yeah, 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 for us it's a large opportunity. Please appreciate that almost $8 billion of IT products are imported into India. So, yeah, we are going to jump at it. This is our time, Mr. Tyagarajan, and I know that the Indian manufacturing industry has been waiting for uh, this time for a while now. As I said, that 25% share of GDP, of manufacturing to GDP has been elusive, but do you believe that the time has now come? And what, to your mind, are the enablers to propel the story forward? Thank you, Sri. Uh, it's not only that 25%. In the global trade, our share was 2% uh, or so. Uh, it is exciting times. Uh, this is my 44th year of career. And I, I haven't seen this kind of excitement in the industry uh, so far. The, um, you know, in um, specifically air conditioning uh, uh, refrigeration industry, the penetration levels in India has been uh, low and we were dependent on huge amount of imports, number one. 
Number two, this is an industry which uh, not only lacked scale. You will see this uh, theme coming up. Yeah, we, can, we can see the scale uh, theme right scale, running scale. through right across the panel. Yeah. Uh, I'm adding to that uh, the uh, sustainability issue. In the air conditioning, we do have the problem of not only power consumption, ozone depletion, global warming related issues connected with refrigerants. You will find the third S is connected with smart manufacturing because suddenly you are going to compete with mm -hmm. Uh, somewhere like China, like our domestic market size uh, last year was 8 million, it may be 10 million this year. China produces 120 million air conditioners and their domestic market size is 88 uh, million. So they manufacture air conditioners like pencils or ballpoint <laughs> pens, that's the reality. So if you want to compete with them, you need to be investing in uh, R&D innovation that has that subject has not come in mm. it's going to be one uh, challenge with some point six percent of uh, GDP R&D investments I don't think they will make it the private sector investment in R&D will have to go up the last one is uh, Maruti understands this very well that uh, Indian market is affordable aspirational middle class so therefore, how will you produce a product at affordable uh, mm. range? Uh, you know, the business school taught some mm. premium and all. I don't think that mm. theory is any more true. So you have to, uh, you are fighting against time. Quickly you have to do it if you want to participate in the global supply mm. chain. The greatest enabler had been, uh, A, uh, that political stuff that was said, the import duty, you cannot yeah. import air conditioners with refrigerant filled, that became a barrier. Second is the PLI scheme, uh, which has uh, helped air conditioning in the industry to commit investments. Our manufacturing capacity, that industry's manufacturing capacity is going to double within 18 months. Hmm. Market Will is demand not. double in 18 months? I, I don't think so. The point I want to make is what is going to happen is this 4,500, 5,000 crore of PLI See, PLI is a misleading statement. It is not a production-linked incentive. It is a sales-linked incentive. One will have to show the incremental sales. Yeah. So what the companies are going to do is dilute this PLI in the pricing. Mm. So the product is going to become affordable. Which is good news for the consumer. That's right. It's good news for the government. It is good news for the company because you have uh, created an infrastructure. So that scheme is uh, helping. But as Sudipta said, what, he, what I am finding is, I don't think we have people to execute all this. Mm. The manufacturing talent is very poor in the country. First of all, uh, I come from sales and marketing mm. background, I, I know this. We all pampered sales and marketing guys with higher salaries. The manufacturing <laughs> guys were not paid at all. And uh, so where are you? We are now trying to poach from here and there and manage. So that talent is not there. They all will know manufacturing engineering as a discipline yeah. it is not there. We do not have, we all uh, import machinery from Korea, Japan, China and yeah. manage. That ecosystem has not developed. And, uh, but, but still, uh, the, the uh, Indian uh, spirit is very high. Mm. Uh, the transformation that is taking place is exciting. So at last we have arrived.